distinct artistic style. Basquiat's style is a visual testament to his multifaceted narrative. A detailed analysis reveals the masterful fusion of diverse influences, starting with the intricate lines that compose his figures. Each stroke, often abrupt and rapid, carries with it an urgency, a raw energy that transcends the rigidity of conventional forms. The expressiveness of Basquiat's lines is an extension of his intrinsic vivacity, a window into the intensity of his emotions and thoughts. The unique iconography of Basquiat is a symbolic universe that demands close observation. Crowned skulls, stylized figures, and written words intertwine in a visual choreography that unfolds as a form of self-contained communication. Each symbol is not just an aesthetic addition, but a layer of meaning that enriches the narrative. The crown, for example, frequently present in his works, can be interpreted as a, a reflection of his self-perception as a cultural icon or, alternatively, as a reflection on power and hierarchy. Basquiat's chromatic palette, often vivid and bold, is an extension of his willingness to defy limits. Vibrant colors dance on the canvases in a visual dialogue that transcends the barriers of realism. Basquiat's choice of colors is not arbitrary. Each shade contributes to the emotional atmosphere of his works. Intense reds may evoke passion or turmoil, while softer tones like blues and yellows offer counterpoints of calmness and optimism. The striking presence of words and phrases in Basquiat's works adds a unique literary dimension to his visual style. Words are not merely inscriptions. They are statements, questions, and fragments of a conversation that the artist engaged in with himself and the world around him. This fusion of visual and written language is a distinctive feature that sets Basquiat apart as a visual storyteller, a narrator whose language transcends the boundaries of the verbal. The use of words, often scratched or highlighted in his works, suggests a constant exploration of the power of letters. The text is not a mere accessory. It is a structure that underpins the narrative. Each chosen word, each fragmented phrase, is a bridge between the observer and Basquiat's effervescent mind. This interaction between word and image, between written and pictorial language, is a striking characteristic of the artist's style. A deep analysis of Basquiat's visual style cannot overlook the exploration of his approach to human anatomy. The schematic figures, often devoid of traditional anatomical details, reveal an intention to capture the essence of the human experience in its rawest form. Faces, often masked or schematized, become bearers of universal emotions, transforming into timeless icons that resonate beyond cultural borders. The fragmentation and overlap of visual elements in his works are also fundamental aspects of Basquiat's style. This technique, contributing to the chaotic yet harmonious composition of his canvases, is a visual representation of his multifaceted view. The overlay of images and words is a metaphor for the complexity of existence, where diverse influences and narratives coexist in an ordered chaos. The relevance of Basquiat's style transcends the purely aesthetic. It is an expression of his stance towards the world. His art is a blend of traditions, a dialogue between the scholarly and the popular, between the conscious and the subconscious. Each element of his style is a conscious choice, a visual statement that challenges easy categorizations and invites interpretation. In conclusion, a deep analysis of Basquiat's visual style reveals a universe rich in symbolism, color, and energy. Each stroke, each word, is a note in a visual symphony that resonates beyond temporal and geographical borders. Basquiat's singularity does not reside solely in the aesthetics of his works, but in the ability of his style to transcend the canvas, to engage the observer in an experience that goes beyond the visual, reaching a lasting emotional resonance. Basquiat did not just paint. He created his visual alphabet, an aesthetic language that continues to speak to the heart and mind, of those who venture into his singular artistic universe, collaborations and relationships. In the tumultuous art scene of 1980s New York, two iconic figures, each bearing a unique language, joined forces in a collaboration that would transcend the boundaries of artistic tradition. Jean-Michael Basquiat, hailing from the vibrant streets of Brooklyn, and Andy Warhol, the established pop art icon, 
formed a creative alliance that left an indelible mark on the history of contemporary art. In this discussion, we delve into the intricate layers of these collaborations with a special focus on the transformative partnership between Basquiat and Warhol. The union between Basquiat and Warhol, which began in 1982, can be interpreted as a meeting of two seemingly disparate worlds. Warhol, already established as a legendary figure in the art scene, and Basquiat, the young insurgent emerging from the streets and nightclubs, brought unique perspectives and a shared thirst for innovation. The partnership was not just a crossing of paths. It was an intergenerational dialogue, a collision of styles that generated creative sparks. The pinnacle of this collaboration was the joint production of works, where each artist's distinctive style intertwined in a visual tapestry rich in symbolism and contrast. Olympic Rings 1985 is a striking example of this fusion of style. Warhol brought the pop aesthetic, vibrant colors, and cultural icons, while Basquiat inserted his visceral mark with expressive strokes and symbols laden with meaning. The result was a visual synergy that challenged easy categorizations, pointing to the possibility of transcendent collaborations and the collaboration between Basquiat and Warhol did not limit itself to the canvas. They shared spaces, experiences, and inevitably mutual influences. The dynamic of the partnership was not one-sided. It was an organic exchange where experience and youthful vigor found common ground. Warhol, known for his ironic detachment, found in Basquiat a vitality that reignited his own creative flame. Basquiat, in turn, had the opportunity to absorb the wisdom of a seasoned master, incorporating elements of pop art into his own language. The collaboration between Basquiat and Warhol also resonates as a commentary on the role of art in the social and commercial context. Their joint exhibition at the Schaffersee Gallery in 1985, showcasing their collaborative works, was a landmark event. This exhibition often met with polarized criticism opened a dialogue about the intersection between avant-garde art and the growing commercialization of the art market. The social critique embedded in the collaborative works of Basquiat and Warhol raised questions about artistic integrity in an increasingly commerce-driven world. However, it is crucial to highlight that the collaboration between Basquiat and Warhol was not without controversies and challenges. Some critics viewed this alliance as an opportunistic exploration by Warhol of Basquiat's youth and vigor. The power dynamic between the established mentor and the emerging protege was a subject of speculation and interpretation. Nevertheless, this complex relationship also illustrates the multifaceted nature of artistic collaborations, where influence is fluid and roles are not strictly defined. The collaboration between Basquiat and Warhol reached a crossroads in 1987 with Basquiat's premature death at the age of 27. This tragic event not only interrupted a promising partnership, but also marked the end of an era in the New York art scene. Basquiat's absence left a void, and Warhol expressed in subsequent interviews the profound impact that the loss of his young collaborator had on his own creativity. In retrospect, the collaboration between Basquiat and Warhol cannot be reduced to a mere chapter in art history. It was a phenomenon that transcended the brush and paint, incorporating the vitality of counterculture, reflection on the art market, and the intersection between generations. The works resulting from this collaboration, now celebrated as icons, echo beyond the galleries, bearing witness to the ephemerality and timelessness of art. In conclusion, the collaboration between Jean-Michel Basquiat and Andy Warhol is a captivating chapter in the narrative of contemporary art. This union of creative minds, born in the streets and solidified in galleries, provided not only transformative artworks, but also a dialogue about the nature of collaboration, the fluidity of influence, and the role of art in an ever-evolving society. Basquiat and Warhol, each with their distinctive legacy, left a mark that transcends the canvases, reflecting the lasting resonance of creative alliances that challenge, inspire, and redefine the artistic landscape. Social and political criticism. Jan Michael Basquiat, 
The painter of the streets who ascended to the gallery was more than a virtuoso of the palette. He was a visual chronicler of the social and political tensions permeating 1980s New York. His works transcended the stigma of mere aestheticism, exploring the pulsating veins of inequality, identity, and resistance. In this analysis, we delve into the deep layers of the social and political themes that permeated Basquiat's works, transforming his canvases into witnesses and questioners of the complexity of the human experience. Amidst the chaotic landscape of the 1980s, Basquiat's poetics unfolded as a visual dialogue on the most pressing social issues. Marginalization, both racial and economic, was a guiding thread in many of his works. In Hollywood Africans 1983, Basquiat confronts the viewer with a brutally honest exploration of his own African-American identity. The title, referencing the New York black community of which he himself was a part, resonates as a simultaneous affirmation and interrogation of the place of black individuals in America and in the global cultural industry. The representation of skulls and skeletons in his works, as evidenced in Untitled Skull 1981, becomes a visual metaphor for death, not just physical but social. Basquiat questions the brutality of a society that, for many, seems on the brink of annihilation. And the rawness of these representations challenges complacency, prompting reflection on lives lost on the fringe of society and the structural violence that permeates everyday life. Another crucial facet of Basquiat's political poetics is his critique of cultural appropriation and the commercialization of art. In Irony of Negro Policeman 1981, he directly challenges the notion of authority and power in a racially tense context. The figure of the black policeman, symbolizing an apparent contradiction in terms, points to the complexities of identity and loyalty in a system that often exploits its own roots. Irony, expressed both visually and linguistically, is a sharp weapon in Basquiat's hands. The intersection of art and politics reaches its zenith in the Defacement series 1983. Inspired by the death of Michael Stewart, a young black graffiti artist who died in police custody, the graphic representation of police violence in Basquiat's visceral response transcends personal lament channels collective pain into a pictorial narrative that calls for action. The series is not just a reaction. It is a call to social awareness and collective responsibility in the face of injustices. The richness of social and political themes in Basquiat's works is complemented by his approach to popular culture and mythology. In Boy and Dog in a Johnny Pump 1982, he reimagines the narrative of the boy and his dog in an urban context where the struggle for survival is raw and incessant. Basquiat, often referencing historical and literary figures in his works, transcends the ephemerality of popular culture, incorporating it into a broader tapestry of the human experience. The collaboration with Andy Warhol, represented in works like Olympic Rings, 1985, adds an additional dimension to the political discussion. The convergence of Warhol's pop art with Basquiat's cryptic style creates a visual narrative about the convergence of different social and cultural strata. It is a commentary on the reciprocal influence between generations on the interaction between high and low culture, casting a provocative gaze on the role of art in filtering and challenging the complexities of society. The ongoing relevance of social and political themes in Basquiat's works is evident in the persistence of his messages in contemporary culture. Issues of systemic racism, economic inequality, and police brutality continue to resonate, making Basquiat's works not only historical witnesses but also prophets of the present. His political poetry, imbued with timeless urgency, inspires critical reflection and transformative action. In conclusion, the analysis of social and political themes in Basquiat works reveals an artist whose palette was not just an aesthetic expression, but a visual manifesto about the injustices and complexities of his time. His political poetry transcends historical context, inviting successive generations to look beyond the vibrant colors of his canvases and listen to the voices clamoring for justice and equality. Jean-Michael Basquiat was not just a painter, 
He was an architect of visual narratives that challenged, questioned, and echo as a testimony to the social and political battles that continue to shape our world. Success and challenges. Beginning of Basquiat's career, marked by his forays as a graffiti artist under the pseudonym Samo, laid the foundation for his rebellious and provocative aesthetic. In the urban context, his bold brushstrokes were visual statements, poetic cries challenging established norms. However, this success in the streets, though recognized in counterculture, did not foreshadow the magnitude of the impact his works would have in conventional art circles. The turning point came in 1981, when Basquiat had his first solo exhibition at the Anina Nose Gallery in New York. Recognition in this conventional space marked Basquiat's shift from the underground to the mainstream. Initially cautious, critics soon found themselves compelled to acknowledge the raw originality emanating from his canvases. This movement from street anonymity to gallery walls was an unprecedented transition, defining the onset of Basquiat's dizzying success. However, Basquiat's rapid success was not just a tale of acclaim. The transition to the mainstream brought a series of challenges, some intrinsic to the ephemeral nature of fame and others related to the complexity of his artistic persona. The sudden media attention, while praising his works, also led to intense scrutiny and, in some cases, simplification of his art. The complexity of Basquiat's works, filled with symbols, references, and a personal iconography, often eluded immediate understanding. The media, eager for simplified narratives, could misinterpret his creations, reducing them to stereotypes of street art or primitive. Basquiat, a self-taught artist with a vast repertoire of artistic influences, often resisted easy labeling. The challenge lay in maintaining the integrity of his artistic vision while navigating a landscape that did not always value the conceptual depth of his Another challenge associated with rapid success was the pressure for constant production. The increasing demand for his works put Basquiat in a race against time with ever-growing expectations for new creation. This frenetic pace, while witnessing a remarkable proliferation of works, also raised questions about creative sustainability and the implications for artistic quality amid incessant production. The dynamics of the art market, intrinsic to Basquiat's success, also presented peculiar challenges. The exponential appreciation of his works brought with it a commodification that, for some critics, threatened to distort the integrity of his art. The speculation around his works, often dissociating them from their cultural and political context, was a phenomenon that Basquiat observed with skepticism. The battle to preserve the authenticity of his artistic voice amid a market eager for icons proved to be a constant dilemma. The impact of Basquiat's success also reverberated in his personal life. The pressures of stardom, combined with the challenges faced by many black artists in an industry often lacking in representation, added complex layers to his journey. The quest for identity and authenticity in an environment that did not always understand the complexities of his racial experience was an underlying narrative unfolding simultaneously with his artistic ascent. The tragedy of Basquiat's premature death in 1988 at the age of 27 cast a shadow over the dizzying brilliance of his career. His abrupt departure, while eternally enshrining his artistic aura, also prompted reflections on the human costs associated with rapid success and the intensity of artistic life in a scenario where pressure was constant. In conclusion, Jean-Michael Basquiat's rapid success is a complex narrative of inherent triumphs and challenges. The transition of his works from the streets to the galleries represented an unprecedented transformation, but emerging obstacles highlight the inherent tensions in balancing recognition and artistic integrity. Basquiat's legacy, intertwined with his bold works and a life lived intensely, continues to inspire and question traditional narratives of artistic success, leaving behind an unfinished tale of exceptional talent and the complexities accompanying the fleeting glow of fame. And thus we conclude the second part of the video about the artist in question. Don't forget to leave your like, comment, and share your opinions on the video. Additionally, be sure to watch the upcoming parts that are on the way. Keep participating in this artistic journey. 
share it with others who share your taste, and always remember to stay connected to continue with these unfolding developments. See you in a little while. Art.